Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, April 24th, 2020, and this is our weekly video, a look back at last week's uh, auction results on eBay, on Catawiki, what's been going on with the live auctioneers, auctions on the global member pages and valuable bids, all that, and uh, get everything caught up. One of the things I wanted to mention was, in case you missed it, uh, a lot of you have already seen it, but we did a video here on avoiding internet uh, auctions of, of fakes and copies and that sort of thing. And it's, it, we, we, we get into a bit of how we look at auctions when we come across them online, what we look for, what are alarm bells to us, what concern us uh, overall with an auction, and then and then down to specific items and, and how you should look at them. And I hope it, it, it serves as sort of a guide for folks that, you, that get um, a little bit uh, befuddled sometimes looking on all the live auction sites and seeing all the fakes and copies out there. Um, you always have to bear in mind that live auctioneers and valuable bid squared, none of these sites vet the content of their sale, of, of the sales that are posted on them. Uh, Sotheby's does, obviously, Christie does, iGavel uh, checks things over very carefully, Catawiki vets some things, uh, eBay, of course, does not. So, uh, anyway, those are sort of the rules, but uh, I, I hope you find it useful, okay? And now let's uh, let's take a look and see what's been going on this week. We haven't changed much on the site this week. We're working still on the video for another museum uh, uh, show, and um, we'll probably get to that and get it up next week. But we got a little tied up with other things around here this week, and uh, here we are. So, all right. First thing I wanted to point out was this: uh, there was a couple of sales that, that closed um, the, this past week. Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, the uh, was it uh, the auction house uh, Coronari in Belgium uh, finished up their sale this week, and they had this very nice uh, about a about a seven or eight inch wide Wan Lee bowl. It was in nice condition. Good looking little little example, and uh, it did pretty well. But it wasn't it wasn't an outrageous price. It sold for seven hundred euros, but it was a nice looking bowl. They had a lot of good uh, uh, Ming and Kangxi pieces and some good early Famille Rose uh, examples in their sale. Uh, it was it was a nice auction, and overall uh, the results looked like they did quite good. We had nearly uh, about three quarters of the entire sale on the site. Uh, and then they had this up. This was this, I think, was it was a nice buy for somebody. It was an interesting little uh, one Lee jarlet. Had a little nick out of the rim, but it, a good example, about four or five inches tall, and it ended up selling for 800 euros. But it was an interesting form, and you see this same form in Middle Eastern porcelain or pottery that they do in blue and white as well. Uh, it, it was a popular form uh, in that part of the world as well as in China. Uh, so uh, that was that was a nice buy for someone for 800 pounds. They sh uh, 800 euros. They should go now find the Persian uh, counterpart and put them together and make a nice pair. All right, and then over to this. This was that uh, uh, transitional period uh, ewer with the with the with the horseback uh, riders with the hunters on them. This was an interesting thing. And last week, what they had, they gave it an estimate of eight to twelve hundred dollars or something. And I thought it seemed awfully low. And in the end, uh, what was the estimate? Uh, six to twelve hundred euros, rather. It ended up selling for thirty six hundred euros, which is about right. Um, that's that's sort of the range these sell for. You know, three to five thousand dollars. And uh, it was a good example and very well painted. The decoration on that was quite excellent. And then on to this. This is the uh, a very nice basket uh, pattern, uh, Kangxi dish with these uh, lotus petal uh, edging going around the outside with different scenes on them. And then you have this nice uh, Femi Ver uh, potted plant in the middle with blossoming flowers. It was a beautiful, beautiful plate. And uh, I don't think it went for a crazy amount of money, $750. That was a nice purchase for $750. And it wasn't, it wasn't a huge plate. It was about eight or nine inches in diameter, but very well decorated, nice quality, always the quality. All right, and then there were these, this nice pair of uh, rather unusual Yongshen period open salts for the European market. These are based on silver forms, um, and, and this, these were nicely decorated, nice soft enamels. It's possible they were done early, early, early in the Qinlong period, 
but I, I think they're probably Yong Chen as they as they as they had described, and they went for seven hundred and fifty dollars, seven hundred and fifty euros, which is not bad at all. Open salts are, uh, for the Western market are very collectible. Uh, they have made many different varieties over the years, and uh, these were nice ones. These were very elegant. And then over to this. This was the that fantastic looking uh, 18th century export plate with the Dutch ship on it. And I love the little the Dutch long uh, longboat down here. They're rowing it. You can see it right there. Well, I bring it up. There it is. All right. And the ships are all flagged and all that. Nice unusual plate. Notice there's no uh, uh, other border other than this very simple black border with um, with scrolls and vines and flowers on it. Just beautifully done. And it went for 2,400 euros because it's a rare pattern. It's a rare type, and uh, these don't turn up on the off uh, market very often. And this one looked to be in very nice shape. There wasn't much wear to the enamels, and it measured uh, roughly eight inches in diameter. All right. So that was sort of it. But we'll get to some things that are coming up. And now let's take a look at see what was on the newsletter page this week. This is the newsletter page. It has grown a great deal. <laughs> and uh, let's take let's start over with uh, some things at Catawiki. One of the things was this. I thought this was just charming, an absolutely charming little uh, okimono of, 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 of a demon figure. It had, it's probably from the eight, Edo period, circa 1800 to 1840, somewhere around there. But beautifully done, just an interesting object, three, four inches long, but just very nicely done. It's got a lot of, a lot of soul to it. And uh, it ended up selling reasonably, 130 euros. Uh, again, we're seeing you know the Japanese market is is behind the Chinese market price wise, not quality wise. The quality of the Japanese things are just outstanding, and uh, they just happen to be a relative bargain right now. It'll change, in some. We'll all be sitting around saying, why did we buy more Japanese stuff? At any rate, this was a nice example, and 130 euros was not unreasonable for that at all. You'll notice many of you, and we've mentioned it several times, that on, when it comes to Katowiki on the, on the newsletter page, um, if you've subscribed to it, you've seen that we've increasingly uh, focused more and more on unreserved items. Because I think some of the sellers over there go a little crazy on their reserves. And uh, we're going to be featuring the unreserved things, things that you really have a shot at, okay, rather than trying to guess where the reserve is. It's no fun. All right, is this. This is a nifty, nifty uh, Suba. Uh, just a very unusual type. It's it's cast from iron. Uh, I love the pattern on it. it. Looks like a face. It's just very charming, interesting, and evocative. And uh, when you can get all that again for 130 euros, that's a pretty great thing. That's a nice thing. If you're a Suba buyer, you should keep your eye on Catawiki. Check us each week because uh, they always seem to have a good a good source of some very nice Subas on there. And uh, and they and they're buyable. You can buy them for typically the range seems to be 120, 110 dollars up to maybe 400. But there's some good examples in there, good mixed metal pieces like this one. This is a very nice sort of later Edo period mixed metal uh, suba, uh, nicely done, nice surface on it with, uh, with uh, uh, gold and silver uh, mixed metal work added to it. I love the pine tree sort of hanging down over them all. Just beautiful. And this went fairly fa reasonable price, too, 212 euros. All right. And, and there were another dozen or two dozen of them on there. This was just a sampling of, of what they have. All right. And then on to this, the, the Swato plate. I like the Swato plate. Swato, Swato plates come in, in so many different varieties of decoration and so forth. But this was a, a rather nice one. And what I liked about it was the, uh, hold on a second, I'll get to it. It had a few nicks and bumps in it. But they always seem to. I love the way they drew the uh, foo lion or the lion in the middle. It almost looks like a, a, an illustration of an English lion, a, you know, a, a lion that's you know, about to become rampant um, with its paws out and so forth. I just thought this was charming. And uh, it, didn't, it didn't bring a crazy amount of money. 450 euros for a nice piece of swato. It had a little hairline in the rim, as I recall, but that was about it. It was in pretty good shape. And swato pieces tend to get banged around because they were used so much. And it was uh, 384 millimeters wide, so 38 centimeters, so about 16 inches. Nice deal. That was a good buy. Good buy for someone. All right. And then over to this, the, the uh, Kangxi uh, basin, small basins or, or shallow bowl, but beautifully decorated. The profusion of flowers on this are just meticulously done. And the cobalt was a very nice quality, nice, deep, dark blue cobalt. 
beautifully done, had a mark on the back. Um, and it ended up selling for just $560 which isn't bad at all for that. That was a really well done plate. Because you could buy Kang Shi plates in the, in the $200 range, the $400 range, the $800 range, and so on, it, you know, into the thousands. Uh, it, it always hinges on the artwork because they, they had such a wide range of quality of decoration on these pieces. And this thing was 34, 34 centimeters in diameter, so it was about 14 inches roughly. And uh, just a nice big piece, and I think that was a very reasonable price really do and then over here the uh, Republican period uh, vase this was from a seller in France uh, they they uh, they tend to get things like this this is a good one they they weren't sure whether it was late 19th or Republican and I think it's pretty clearly Republic period to me but uh, in any event it brought fifty seven hundred and one dollars which is about what it was worth um, it did have a signature on it and I'm sure everybody went and looked it up to see who this is and uh, paid accordingly but Beautiful, beautiful vase, uh, a nice example, good white porcelain. And then on to these, the little, the, I, I like these. These are sort of an unusual pattern. They did them in the late Yong Chen, early Chen Lung period. These uh, gilded and, and ink outlined uh, uh, fowl in, in uh, sort of under the edge of a pond with the little plants and whatnot around them. And beautifully shaped. They, they, always, they tend to always have shaped the rims on these and the rims on the cups. Here's a shot of the bottom of it, that nice snow white porcelain that you expect to see. Here's a little grasshopper or something. Just interesting. Lots of things going on here. And it sold for a good price, but not crazy. $510 for it because it's unusual and it was really, really nicely done, which is, of course, very important. And then over to this. This was that uh, fairly large bottle vase, uh, Famille Rose, late, late Ching, made probably for the Indian or the Middle Eastern market because they did supply those, those uh, parts of the world with, with ceramics as well, done in their taste. And this is clearly in the, probably in the Indian taste. I love the, uh, the way the, the plants scroll up. You see textiles with this almost exact, and made in India, with the, almost the, the nearly this exact same pattern um, uh, in wax resist uh, textiles and so forth in, in weavings. All right, and here's the bottom of it. And that's what the bottom of these typically look like. Nice, wide, flat foot, very stable. Um, and you have that, that sort of rusty uh, uh, paste uh, because they, were, they didn't particularly clean the, the clay too much because it was going to be fully glazed and they were producing these for export. And it sold reasonably, I think. I think this was very reasonable. $423 for a nice big thing. 42 centimeters in height. That was big. That's about 16 inches. And I think that was a very, very good buy. You know, nice to look at. Nice to look at. And then over here to the uh, iron red with the Schaumark uh, bowl. Good size bowl, about 15 inches in diameter. Um, had sort of this oddball uh, pseudo Chin Lung mark on the, uh, on the back. It's not a, I don't think it was Chin Lung. I think it was 19th century. But regardless, it did fine. It brought $1,341. Because it was nice looking. It was just a, a very attractive bowl. It had a slight warp in the rim, you noticed. Sort of scoops down. But that's not really all that uncommon on those. If you look, if you look at them at my level, you'll notice that they often have little warps in them. Uh, export bowls tended to be much flatter on the tops. So they tended to be more even because the, 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 they were trying to please the Western market so they'd buy more. <laughs> all right, and then on to this, the uh, uh, Kangxi dish with the, with the chrysanthemums and flowers all over it. And this did pretty well. And the reason is, is that it has no wear. Uh, th these enamels were very prone to wear and chipping, and in, especially in the centers of these, you always see a little bit. And this bowl look, uh, plate looked pretty much perfect, pretty much perfect, front and back. The foot rim, this, the grooved foot or the track foot, uh, very even, no chips out of it. Overall, good condition, and it helped the price a lot. Um, it had two minor rim chips. They were really tiny. Um, otherwise, this thing was perfect for $2,146. Nice kung shi, nice kung shi example. Um, I don't think it was made in 1670, though. I think it was probably made later, but that's just my, my guess. At any rate, not, not a lot later, just a little later. And, uh, and then on to this, the kung shi kirin jar. This was a good jar. Uh, I thought it was quite striking. Uh, uh, early kung shi period, almost, almost in, the, in the style of some transitional pieces. 
but I, I, lo- I love uh, the, the, the creature they put on this. Kirins are basically, they often get confused with foo lions. They're a bit different. Uh, some of the differences are, one, they have these, these uh, spined backs, these spiky backs, and they have horns coming out of their heads, and they have fish scale bodies and then hooves on their feet. Um, and they, and they, they, when they paint them, they often look very similar to foo lions, and they get confused, and sometimes they get referred to as foo lions. But they're they're typically Kirin, and they and they are Kirin, and they have the the same Kirins are in in Japan. In Japan they call them Kirins, in China they call them Kirin, but it's a, it's the same creature. And uh, it went for fifty nine hundred and eighty dollars. It did pretty well, but not a big surprise. And it was decent size, as I recall. This was a nice size thing, twenty five centimeters. So it was it was uh, you know around nine nine inches or so tall, and had it had a lid with it and everything. It was good looking. And then back to this, one of my little favorite carvings. I, I've talked about this a couple of times just because I like, I love old Chinese wooden carvings. And I liked this one because I liked, the, especially the way the, the carver was able to, to sweep the robes back as though there was wind blowing and uh, the, the hand is up and the finish and all the little details are just so beautifully done on this, really were just lovely. And uh, probably made of boxwood. And uh, it, it ended up selling for a fairly reasonable price, $400. It was about nine inches tall, but uh, I think that was a great thing. And uh, increasingly, people are buying these and collecting these because the, 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 the quality of some of these carvings is just wonderful. Just wonderful. And uh, then on to this, the uh, Kangxi Charger with the, uh, with the pagodas and the, uh, and, the, and the banner. Beautiful example. The way they, and I, love, I always like the way they do these checkerboard sort of patterned walls around forts and so forth. But this was a nice example. Here's a picture of the back, that nice sort of ivory uh, toned foot rim. And then they have little precious objects running around the outside. And this plate brought $4,350. Like I said, Kangxi dishes come in a wide range of prices. And uh, this is a fairly rare one, and it was big. It was big. And big big makes a, a, a very a large difference. Once you get over 11 or 12 inches on Kangxi plates in particular, the, the, the prices jump exponentially as they go up. And this was 38 centimeters, so it's about 16 inches. Pretty good plate. And then over to this, the barber bowl, the one with the bad photography. Uh, I wish the guy had white balanced his camera. I think this would have helped his piece a lot because that yellow tone to a lot of people, the way it looks on our both our mon- all our monitors here, mine, this one, the one over there, and my laptop, um, it, that yellowish tone instantly makes people think restoration uh, because that's the color that old restorations often turn um, as they as they age. And I don't think this was not an, uh, a, a restored piece. It's just the color. And if you look over here, you can see where the light actually hits it cleanly. And you have a nice white piece. And over here, it turns yellow again. And that is because of the light. Uh, he may have had a fluorescent light on in the room or something. So as a result, it went for $353, which made it a great buy. Barber bowls are interesting, and it was Kung Shi period. That was a very good buy for someone. And then on to this. Whoops, I forgot to pull this one up. Hold on a minute. This I liked a lot. This was a little Kangxi cup with a double twin fish on the bottom. And what was nifty about it, in a way, it, it, unusual, because usually when they show these wisteria and grapes pattern pieces, they usually stick a squirrel in there. It was, a, it was Using squirrels was something that started during the transitional period and, and even a little bit earlier toward the late Ming, and you'd have grapes and squirrels. It was a popular, popular pattern in decorating porcelain. And on this one, they did the grapes and the vines and all that. You can see all the little vines curling around and whatnot, but no squirrels. And I checked this bowl all the way around, and there weren't any squirrels on it. There are the fish. And there's a, Oh, there's a squirrel on the inside. You found it. There it is. I didn't look this far. <laughs> there's your squirrel. Okay. All righty. Uh, mystery solved. And... Um, it sold for $439, which is a perfectly good price for that, an interesting piece of porcelain. I do look at some of these things and explore a little bit more once I am up here, so you have to excuse me for that. All right, and then on to this, the Kung Shi style mallet vase. This vase brought a lot of money, and, and, and I'm not sure why. Uh, it was a good-looking thing. It was nicely drawn. Um, it looked like it had a little maybe repair up here around the top, and it ended up selling for $2,910. How big was this thing? Oh, 61 inches without the stand. Okay, so it was two feet tall, 24 inches tall. Okay, yeah, I sort of get it. 
but I think the repair would have held it back a little bit. Anyway, twenty nine hundred and ten dollars for that big vase. Uh, it was it was pretty. The decoration was nice. It was clearly a nineteenth century vase because all you'd have to do is just if you're not certain, just look at the foot rim on it, and that that gritty rounded, uh, unwhite foot rim is very typical of late nineteenth century and, and early twentieth century pieces. And uh, it brought twenty nine hundred and ten dollars. Kind of surprising still. All right, and then over to this, the pair of silks that were framed that we talked about last week when they were just getting started. Thought they were very nice. Uh, good silk work, nicely done. Figures were beautifully detailed. The women's faces were all very beautifully done. Uh, if we can pull one of them up. Well, this is one of the guys' faces. You can see that the work is really well, well, well executed all the way around and uh, good and clean and on, a, on a, that soft apricot ground that, that is so appealing. And uh, they ended up selling for $5,500 for the pair. Uh, but they were very decorative. When they look fabulous on a wall, huh? Uh, buy more paintings. All right, and then on to this, the, uh, the uh, Japanese Arita plate, early 18th century dish, S superb quality decoration. That was the one thing that jumped out at me about this was that the, the blue and white decoration, the, uh, the blue cobalt decoration with the citron fingers that are sort of done here as flowers and the rocks and the shading and the drawing and the scale and all that. And then on the back, you have the spur marks and this sort of Y pattern which was pretty typical of that period. And uh, it went for, it was, it, was, it was a buy it now. I put it up just because I thought it was such a good one. And um, it was listed at 280, and the and the seller accepted an offer. I don't know what the what the selling price was, obviously, but it was probably probably in the, I would guess in the 250 dollar range. But a very nice piece of early early Amari or early Arita. And uh, what size was this? This was pretty good size. It was nice size, 31 centimeters. Yeah, it was almost a foot in diameter. So that was a very nice buy for an early early piece of Arita in great condition. And then over here to the Kangxi vase, uh, looks like it was probably made for the Indian and the Islamic market. Uh, nicely done. It's got the, the flaming mandala behind it on here. Uh, very Buddhist and these nice, nice acanthus leaves coming down. And in the end, it did pretty well. It brought $2,025, which I, I think is fairly reasonable. Uh, it was sold as a Persian style uh, vase, which is about right. It's a, it's a correct thing to say. And then the, this, the, I had two inquiries about this. Two people wanted to know if it was clobbered. <clears throat> Clobberware is, is a type of porcelain, if you don't know. It's made in China. Let's say it's underglazed blue, typically. Uh, sometimes they have a few enamels on them, and they ship them to Europe. And the Europeans would take them and redecorate them and add more color, add more enamels, overlay, overlay enamels onto it, and then sort of give it a light firing and set them. All right, this is not a, 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 an example of that. This is a... A, a genuine transitional piece with enamels, side enamels, beautifully done. And I loved the way it was painted. I just loved the way this thing was done because what they did was they managed to do the over overglaze enamels to appear to be behind the underglazed blue. It's very three-dimensional. It's an optical trick. And I thought that was just terrific. And you notice here that the, the green flowers, uh, the green leaves rather and the red flowers appear to be behind the cobalt, which actually went on first. So it's a very, a very nicely done thing. Here you have the bamboos, the bamboo trees coming up. And the, again, the green, the green aspects look as though they're three-dimensionally behind it. I think that's nice. And this got a lot of interest. It ended up selling for $4,380, $81. Um, and it, it was around eight or nine inches tall. So it was a nice size, very presentable, but very attractive example. And, 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 and not the typical decoration you see on transitional pieces. Just very, very pretty. All right, and now let's take a look and see what's coming up next week, okay? Um, all of these things will be coming off, uh, obviously, uh, later on today. But there's some good things turning up, and a, and a couple of sellers have, uh, have, have come back to do a, a fairly large sale. This is one of them. This is Qing period over in uh, 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 the Netherlands. You get some nice things. This is a very attractive Kangxi dish with a spotted deer hauling a flower cart. And you have this, you know, sort of nice iron red decoration with, with uh, precious objects and cartouches in between. And then this very effective use of negative space, um, which, is, which is nice. Uh, the Kangxi decorators are really good at utilizing negative space. And, 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 they, could, and, and they also have the amazing ability to do very dense 
uh, 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 closely painted things, very, uh, you know, like that profusion of, of underglazed blue that we saw in that basin that was at Katowiki. Uh, that they can do successfully, and this kind of work they do very successfully. This is an attractive, attractive piece. And it just started. It just went up. It's got no bids. Uh, the opening bid is nine dollars. It's got nine days to go, and uh, it'll be all of the all of that. The entire sale will be in the newsletter this week. Also, he has this very unusual Chung Sen period transitional uh, 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 footed cup with a bird pursuing a butterfly. This is just a lovely, simple, elegant thing, and uh, nicely done. The uh, the the curves. Of the, of the mouth, the curves of the handle, the curves of the body, everything is curved. Even the foot has a slight curve to it. You notice it comes down and then bumps up and finishes down around the foot. And this is up to just uh, $9.50, but it, it's, it's going to do a lot better than that. That's a good-looking piece of uh, porcelain. And then this. This is a dandy thing. If you're a silver buyer, pay attention. This is a really nice late 19th century, uh, last quarter of the 19th century Chinese silver box. It's about seven inches in diameter. But the quality of the silver work on this with the, with the, with the frosted sort of low relief ground and these high, high, uh, highly relieved, uh, high polished uh, relief is, reliefs of flowers and butterflies and so forth is just great. But the big surprise is when, when you open the box and you get inside the box, what you see is this. It has, it has a liner of silver and gold and it's all compartmented. It's a ladies' box, probably, but absolutely splendid quality. Here's the armies and so forth that have been worked into it. There it is in the liner. All right, just absolutely fascinating. Here's the maker's mark. If you're a silver buff, you can go look it up. And uh, I'm very curious to see what this does. It's up to five or $600 right now, $550, but I, I think it's gonna do very well at the end. I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up going for six times that beautiful box and as I said it is I think seven inches in diameter somewhere around there 7.2 inches in diameter which is a nice size it's not a little pocket box or a snuff box good size box but great quality and then over on the on the global member pages on invaluable this week the uh, Bonhams has a sale up Christie's has the pavilion sale up all right uh, Strauss and Company has a sale coming in a few weeks um, in May, but they've got three VOC Japanese Arita plates in it. All right. Um, and then uh, Chiswick's has a sale coming up on May 10th with things like this. This is a really handsome um, uh, 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 you know, export bowl for the Middle Eastern market. Beautifully done uh, Kangxi period. What's the size? 34 centimeters. So about 13 inches in diameter. But just a beautiful example. You've seen these before. They did these in bowls, and they also did them in big basins and uh, in charges and stuff. And the bowl would sit inside of it. But this was a this is a nice one. If you're interested in this thing, get a condition report. The estimate is also very reasonable. One to two thousand pounds. Um, I think that's extremely reasonable. But get a condition report just in case. Always get condition reports, no matter what. Just get them, even if the piece looks perfect. Uh, <laughs> It can be repaired, and you you know obviously you're not going to see it. And then onto this, there's a pair of um, Amaki de Santos has this. I meant to mention these last week. They have a beautiful pair of Yongchen period, a pair of candies, and they're not very big. They're like eight inches tall or so, but beautiful quality decoration, really really beautiful. Um, if you pull it in, there we go, with that classic rooster pattern that you see. We've seen them many times on cups and saucers. It's a very popular pattern. See it on occasionally on bowls, but a pair of kendies in this pattern is quite nice. They have a nice brown dress rim on them um, up here at the mouth right there. Uh, just a beautiful pair. Uh, estimated at $2,200 to $3,000. Um, not crazy because it's a pair. And I always assume a pair is worth three times the price of a single. So I, I wouldn't be at all uh, debate the, the point that a single of these is worth $1,000 because it is Yongchen period, and it's a rare, fairly rare form for Yongchen porcelain. And then over here to this, this, this Kangxi charger. This is quite something. This is coming up in a few weeks. Ni Nice-looking example. I don't know if there's any, anything else going on with it, but the decorations on it are just intense, very, very uh, 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 powerfully painted, strong colors, strong overglazed blue here, strong reds, 
uh, just a, a very handsome plate with this lotus rim on it and just piles of flowers, again, a profusion of flowers in, in polychrome. And uh, it's estimated at eight to $12,000, but it's 36 centimeters in diameter, so it's pretty good. And the quality of the enameling is outstanding, I think, just really great. So that, it may get it there. And then over here, Gallery Zach in, in, in Vienna has a sale coming up tomorrow. I hope you checked it out on the pages. Um, they have some nifty things. And I like Chinese carpets, rugs, and textiles, so I'm, I'm going to start including them more often because I think that they're just overlooked. But here you have this red-headed crane perched on the rocks with the spotted deer uh, with all that symbolism that goes on there. And... Um, you can buy these fairly reasonably. These are this is estimated at two hundred dollars. It's probably two or th a couple of 18, 20 inches wide and maybe three feet long, something like that. Uh, one hundred twenty-three by sixty-eight centimeters. So it's oh, it's a little, it's a good size one. It's a two and a half feet wide or two feet five inches wide and and uh, about four feet long. All right, perfectly reasonable. That's a nice looking rug. I like those. I like textiles and rugs. Middle Eastern, Central Asian. Um, uh, uh, Chinese and, and Japanese. And then on to this. If you're an Amari buyer, um, this is an opportunity. This is an amazing set. These things are huge, okay? Uh, they, they made Amari garniture sets in Japan and in China. We all know that. And they made them in a wild variety of sizes. People often think of garniture sets as being 8 or 10 inches tall, 15 inches tall maybe. These things are monsters. These are huge. These are 93 centimeters. Um, the small, the, the trumpet vases are 63 centimeters, which means they're over two feet tall. And the, the big pots here, these are all over three feet. They're all over 36 inches. All right, so imagine having that. If you, if you buy Japanese Amari, um, and the estimate is well, well within range, three to 5,000 euros. Um, I think that's a, a very fair price. Uh, a single, just this vase, without being it part of its complete original set, um, for that for that estimate. If you can, if you if you're a buyer of these, get them because you won't see a big set like this coming around again anytime soon, and uh, at auction. Very nice. It's over in Belgium. Get a condition report if you want them, um, and ask for photos of any repaired areas because I'm always thinking there has to be on a set like this. Maybe not. If they're perfect, uh, go for it. They're great. Even if they have some repairs, you can live with them because the pieces are so big and impressive. Uh, just fabulous. Imagine putting those in front of your fireplace Woo! or near your fireplace on a mantle. Get a huge mantle put in. Ha! All right. And now on to this, the big uh, punch bowl. This is a nice Mandarin punch bowl. It's a fairly standard type, but uh, it looks to be in very nice condition. Uh, good, good colors, good soft colors, nicely uh, finished all the way around, uh, and a fair estimate. One to one thousand to fifteen hundred euros. Certainly sell in that range. Beautifully done. The gilding looks like it's in nice condition. Uh, if you're interested in it, get a condition report on that also. And then onto these. There's three teapots and one under tray, with an estimate of eight to twelve hundred euros. Now, a week or so ago, as I recall, we had just one of these teapots. By itself went for seven or eight hundred dollars on eBay, so if you can if you can place a bid on these and buy them anywhere on the on the lower end of that estimate scale, you could keep the one you love and sell the other two and get all your money back plus a profit. All right, but as always, when you like when you have these these uh, pieces with these uh, high relief enamels, uh, uh, high relief work uh, rather in the porcelain like this, you have to get a condition report because these pieces are so prone to chipping and breaking and being reattached. I must say, though, however, th these look like they're in pretty nice shape overall. So you want to check it out regardless. But th it's a nice, nice looking set of things. There's a bunch of stuff now that's turning up over on, uh, on, these, on, on the global pages. It's been kind of busy. We're going to update it tomorrow. We updated it twice in the last week. We'll do it again because some things closed. We had a bunch of sales uh, yesterday, I believe. All right. And, and that's about it for the week. If, you, if you're a subscriber to us over on, uh, on the newsletter, you'll be getting your notice later on. Uh, to you, hopefully, well, by the time you see this, you may have already gotten it. We updated the newsletter page. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube or on our, on our site for the, for, the, for the newsletter page or for the, the other things we've got going on, uh, please come over and do it. Um, uh, it uh, there's a lot of good free information on the site links to museums, auction catalogs. There's 520 of them on there now. Something like that. There's a lot of catalogs and books. 
and uh, they're all in flip back book format you can use them anywhere you're traveling if you're in a hotel at night relaxing you can flip through some auction catalogs for fun all right because that's how that's how collectors roll <laughs> I was looking. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next week, and we'll be working on the uh, other video on the museums. And uh, hope you have a great time this weekend. All right. Enjoy your family. All right. Bye-bye.